NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day is in the books, and wow, what a show it was. Welcome back to GMs for Hire. I'm Matthew Perry. Another rendition of Perry's Pit here, this time reviewing NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day, a five-match card. No misses on this one. Every single match played its purpose and played it pretty well, in my opinion. And uh, wow, the ending at the end, I'll get into. But uh, first, we'll start with the top of the card, uh, the Women's Dusty Cup Final between uh, Ra- Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. They, they were taking on Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. Very good match. Nothing too special here. Uh, solid stuff throughout. Uh, great chemistry by Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. They're probably my favorite tag team in NXT right now. I do want to see a solo run from Raquel Gonzalez because she's an absolute monster. She's so, so good in the ring, so dominant. I want to see what she could do. Dakota Kai, of course, the other half of that team, she provides the more technical stuff. But as a team, they are perfect. They are perfect. They'll be getting a title shot out of this because they won. They defeated Shotzi and Ember Moon. I'm not the biggest fan of untraditional tag teams. We've been seeing that a lot in the WWE recently, especially on the main roster on Raw and SmackDown. But Shotzi and Ember Moon, they teamed up for War Games. They've been together in the past. So this made sense. So I wasn't uh, too put off by it. Uh, Overall, solid match, nothing special. And I think it was the correct result. Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai, the first ever Women's Dusty Cup champs. I'm looking forward to the title shot. It's going to be exciting. Um, Definitely puts those on Raw and SmackDown on notice. It could potentially skyrocket them to a main roster stay, especially if they win the roster. Uh, So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And we'll move right along. Uh, Next, we had the North American Championship between my boy, Johnny Gargano, and Kushida. Very good match. Uh, Right before the match started, when uh, Gargano was about to come out, right before they hit the entrance ramp, uh, Dexter Loomis comes from behind, kind of, chloroforms Austin theory I mean he took the rag to his face as a PG show what are we doing with chloroform I have no idea but it's Dexter Loomis he's got the serial killer vibes I guess um he takes out theory uh Gargano notices sends uh Candace and Indy to go search for Austin so they there is no uh no the way at ringside it's just Johnny uh for this one he takes on Kushida as mentioned very technical match a lot of chain wrestling a lot of holds Submission heavy, of course, with the Gargano escape on Johnny's end and then Kushida with the hoverboard lock. Those two finishers were both seen, uh, both on hand for this one. Some really good spots. Lawn dart, uh, Johnny on Kushida definitely looked a little tough. Uh, Kushida's face kind of skipped over the the uh, turnbuckle. That was a rough looking spot, but it looked really good. It definitely looked like it served its pur- uh, purpose. A few good reversals by Kushida. Um, a mid mid air turning into a, a Kimura little hoverboard lock there. Very good stuff. But uh, the targeting and selling of Johnny's arm, he, uh, of course, the past couple of weeks, he's uh, he suffered the arm injury at the hands of Kushida. And then he came out last week in a sling and then it, he broke out of the sling. So there was speculation on whether or not the injury was legit, but Johnny was selling it how uh, as if it was legit. And Kushida was targeting the left arm as if it was legit. Uh, so very good there. Uh, it took two, uh, one final beat DDTs to defeat Kushida, one on the outside and then one back inside. Johnny retains the title. The match went a little long for me. Uh, Kushida was in control for most of this. I feel like this is how a lot of Johnny Gargano's matches go because he's so good at playing the underdog, even, even when he is the champion. Um, so it went a little long, but Kushida looked good. And, and Johnny, of course, looked good as well. I think Kushida looked a little better because Johnny played that underdog role, but in the end, it's, it's the result I was looking for. At least Um, Kushida wouldn't be a bad North American champion. I just, I don't think he's on Johnny Gargano's level. Obviously he can't, uh, there got this. I think there's somewhat of a language barrier still. I don't know how good Kushida's English is, Uh, but obviously Johnny can, can talk a lot better and can, because as a champion, you have to be able to, cut promos and and be out there on a weekly basis and I just don't know if Kushida is good for that uh, maybe give him a manager I wouldn't mind that Kushida with a manager could be a lot better but right now I'm glad Johnny retained it he's still the North American champion moving forward to the men's Dusty Cup finals we had MSK and the grizzled young veterans uh, Zach Gibson and James Drake I want to say um, MSK look good uh they carry the undefeated streak into this. They obviously made their debut at the first round of the Dusty Cup and have 
taking it all the way here. Very exciting to watch. Two very athletic guys, uh, Wesley and Nash Carter. That is, um, I, I wanted this to go a different way. And not. I don't think it was the wrong choice. Um, MSK did wind up winning via a neck breaker spine buster combo, which was very nice. And we saw that that moon salt again, or that, I'm sorry, that standing shooting star press where uh, Wesley pushes Nash Carter or the other way around, something like that. But we saw that again, which, which is something that has been at the forefront of their highlight reels uh, since they started. I would have had MSK lose this match and not because they don't deserve it. I think this is very big for them. They're very exciting to, to watch. I think this is just what uh, the main roster needs on NXT. Uh, no, I'm sorry, on Raw and SmackDown, although I don't think they'll stay there. They need distinguished tag teams up there. We've been seeing too much of people just randomly coming together. Ziggler and Bobby Roode right now are the SmackDown tag champs. And for what? I don't, I still don't consider them a distinguished tag team besides what, I mean, not even the New Day anymore, really. But I mean, there's the Street Profits and maybe a couple others. But off the top of my head, the, the, the main rosters definitely need more distinguished tag teams. Uh, this will be a good title shot for them. But back to what I was saying, I would have had them come up short and still look impressive, of course, but give the grizzled young veterans the victory. Obviously, they debuted in last year's Dusty Cup. You know, give them give them the win. They've been around a little longer. MSK, you guys look good, but still got to work for it. They did this. They did this to Keith Lee um, on the main roster. You know, he he got to that title shot and he lost. He came up short, but he still looked good and he still impressed the the crowd. So um, I wish they would have done this because I. I feel like we're almost nearing the end of MSK's, you know, beginning story already. And they've only been here for a few weeks. So I wish they would have dragged it out, but I'm not complaining. They still looked very good. And I still think they'll be very impressive. They're very fun to watch. Uh, Grizzled Young Veterans, I think they look good too. They're not bad heels. They um, came out entrance ramp during their entrance, grabbed a microphone. I want to say it was Zach Gibson who cut the promo um, saying that their time was done. Obviously it wasn't, but you got to talk the talk. Uh, good spot here by um, the Grizzled Young Veterans, a doomsday device, Tope Suicida. Caught me by surprise. They had they had him up, um, I think it was Wesley, they had him up on the shoulders on the outside, and then James Drake comes through through the ropes and does the doomsday device. Very good stuff. Go check it out if you can. Um, that's probably my favorite spot of the match, but uh, obviously MSK getting the win. Okay, it was a good result. I, I will not take that away. Of course, it wasn't preferred, but I do think MSK will be able to handle themselves. Moving forward, we have the NXT Women's Championship, a triple threat match. Io Shirai versus Tony Storm versus Mercedes Martinez. Great build. The video package fist was fantastic. It made me feel like it was anyone's match. And from there, at, at the beginning, it felt like it. Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez, for the most part, carried this match. I feel like Io Shirai, and I, I like her. I think she's a great talent, a great champion. Um, she's very spot heavy, I feel like. And a lot of the match is her getting thrown to the side just for her to come back with some some flying move, some moonsault, some big dive. Uh, I feel like that's a lot of her stuff. We kind of saw it in war games too, because she came in diving with the trash can over her head. And that was the highlight of the match for her. So, uh, and then she got pinned and she lost. Uh, so I'd work on that. I don't love champions that are spot heavy like that, especially when she's been champion this long. I feel like you got to do a little more to prove it. Um, Shirai, she had it again. She dove off of the, I want to call it a lighting tower. I don't know. They had these towers now in like the corners uh, by the barricades where there's lights, obviously. And she jumped off that. Tony and um, Martinez were kind of waiting there for it. You know, that the cheesy spot where they all, where they get together to catch them. And not my favorite, but that was one of Io Shirai's highlights of this match. Uh, yeah, there was another spot in this. Tony Storm had a uh, diving headbutt onto Martinez. The ref just forgets to count. The ref just does not pay any attention. He's not distracted properly. Just Tony's for the pin, and he's just standing there watching them. Uh, Io Shirai comes in with a flying moonsault to break it up anyway, but that definitely took away from it the, the mishap whether whether it was the ref or something else i have no idea but he just stood there and stared at it she got she could have gotten at least a two count and then Eo broke it up i think she timed it right on the moonsault but no count so what does it matter i don't i don't understand that but uh from there after the moonsault Eo hits one more move and wins the match uh Eo shry retains the title 
Uh, she wound up pinning, I want to say, Mercedes Martinez. It fell apart. It fell apart at the end. The ref messing it up definitely screwed it up for me. Um, not my favorite. Kind of suck. I, it was a good match. I don't want to say it kind of sucked. It just disappointing. It fell a little short. It ended quicker than I thought. I thought while a couple other matches went long, this one didn't go long enough. I feel like there was more story to be told. I don't think Tony Storm got enough of a chance to show what she can do. I think she's still very underrated. Obviously, the, the WWE women's division gets deeper and deeper by the day. And I'll, I'll speak on that in a second. But yeah, I mean, the Oshri retains. I, I wish I could have gotten more out of this match. Uh, then we have a segment with LA Knight, aka Eli Drake from Impact Wrestling. He signs with NXT, signed on the dotted line right in front of William Regal, cut a little promo saying, telling everyone to watch out, basically. Cool signing. Off screen, uh, apparently, uh, Tara Valkyrie, uh, wife of John Morrison, who, of course, has returned to the WWE uh, within the last year. Uh, she is now signed to NXT, the former Impact Women's Champion. I like it. I like it a lot. I think Tara Valkyrie has has something to give. Obviously, like I just said, the women's division is getting deeper by the day. Uh, and Valkyrie just cements that statement. So it'll be interesting to see what she can do. I'm looking forward to her debut whenever that may be. Uh, and from there, we got to the main event of the evening, the NXT Championship, Finn Balor versus Pete Dunne. Very physical, very exciting match. Slow start, but definitely more technical. You know, these two like to work hard, work stiff. And you could see it, some good back and forth. Obviously, Pete Dunne with the finger manipulation, that's his thing. Uh, lots of holds, very different holds, legs, arms, everything, you name it. Uh, honestly, in the end, it, it wasn't my favorite match of theirs, although it did pick up towards the end. Uh, Pete Dunne knocks Finn Balor out for, with a hold, like he, he passes out, um, but they don't call it, nothing like that. Why? Um, and at that point, I knew that Pete Dunne wasn't going to win this thing because because Balor was seemingly out. He was motionless for, for at least like five, 10 seconds. Um, Pete Dunne from there hits the bitter end, two count. Uh, it's picking up in intensity. You could see it building. You could see them going harder, working at it. Bitter end gets reversed in the 1916. That's a two count. Balor rips out Pete Dunne's mouthpiece, backs up, double drop kick right into Pete, into Pete Dunne's face. Very good looking move. Coup de gras from there into a 1916 after and Balor retains. Uh, not much to say in between. I, I know I was a little quick on that, being, that being the main event. But what happens after is is what we're going to get to in a second. But I'm upset because I'm a really big Pete Dunn guy. Obviously, what he did in NXT UK was historical. He had that big run before getting taken down by Walter, um, which was fine. But then he comes here. He's looking good. I, I like what I've seen from Pete Dunn. I just wish they'd put the belt on him. I think it's time. Uh, Finn Balor has been a great champion. All of his matches are, he makes all of his matches look like true, true battles. Like he's going through wars to win this stuff. Unlike Shirai, who kind of, in my opinion, beats around the bush to get her victories. But I mean, I, I love Finn Balor as a champion. I want to see it on Pete Dunn or Kyle O'Reilly, who we'll also get to in a minute. But yeah, uh, Finn Balor retains. Uh, I'm upset also because I do think they'll go with Karrion Cross taking the belt off of Finn Balor. Karrion Cross has not excited me in the slightest. I do think Pete Dunn is a lot more of a complete wrestler uh, than Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross's gimmick, I I'm still lost with, you know, the TikTok, the hourglass, the time thing. He's been doing that for a long time. And obviously his injury when he won the NXT championship was unfortunate, but it, it happens, so I don't know why they're still going with this. I hope time actually tells, like it, he's saying it will, like they're aiming towards, but I'd rather go with Pete Dunne than carrying Cross, to be honest. Uh, we move to after the uh, championship match. Dunne is down. Uh, Dunne and Balor are both down. Balor starts to leave. He's up on the entrance ramp. Here comes Birch and Lorcan. Get him from behind. They rush him. They beat him down into the ring. There's no security ever in NXT. I don't know why why the Undisputed Era has to come out and do this every time, but they come out, they fend off Birch and Lorcan and Dunn. They all run off. Why? I, why can't we just have some security? I have no idea. Uh, but uh, the Undisputed Era out there, uh, Strong, Cole, and O'Reilly. Bobby Fish obviously stopped with injury. He was not there. Uh, the Undisputed Era save Balor. They're standing next to him. Uh, you know, they go, they do the whole UE thing. Um, uh, and from there, bang, Adam Cole super kicks 
Finn Balor. And a lot of shock, a lot of what it what is happening uh, comes over the crowd, comes over strong. O'Reilly, O'Reilly immediately starts arguing with Cole. And O'Reilly just a minute ago was helping Balor up. He there's a lot of respect between the two, between Balor and O'Reilly, because of everything they've been through. So like quite a few, you know, war heavy matches, you know, going to the limits, broken jaws, broken bones. You know, they've been through it all together in that ring. So there's a lot of respect between O'Reilly and Balor. And Cole seemed to take exception to this. Super super kicks Finn Balor, the champion, gets in an argument with O'Reilly. Strong is there trying to play Peacemaker a little bit, kind of tries to separate them, looks to the side. Copyright logo hits again. It already hit before. Shows over, right? Nope. Bang. Cole super kicks O'Reilly. Now there's some real shock. Strong is speechless. He's just staring. Absolute disbelief. Is it act? What does this mean? What does this mean? Copyright again. Third time's a charm. Cole's up on the ramp. Strong is just staring. Balor and O'Reilly are motionless. What does this mean for the Undisputed Era? They've been through so much in NXT from their debut at, at, at TakeOver, rushing Drew McIntyre to strong turning on, on Pete Dunne in the Dusty Cup a few years ago to join the Undisputed Era. This all connects to the matches between Balor and O'Reilly, to war games, to everything. What does this mean for the Undisputed Era? Uh, the Undisputed Era have been the bright, one of the brightest points of NXT for years now. I mean, there's, there are a few better, a few more entertaining. I'm a big fan of the Undisputed Era, especially Cole, especially O'Reilly. Bobby Fish is heavily underrated, uh, very good technically. Uh, doesn't see the time of day as often. He's older and all that. Strong, favorite back- backbreaker in the WWE. There's so much to this team, and it's so deep. These are four of the best guys. These All four guys could be champions at some level. And does this mean a feud between them? Is this, is this, are they finally splitting up? Was it just, will, will Cole apologize to O'Reilly? Will O'Reilly now side with Balor? Will Balor, what's Balor to think? Because the Undisputed Era has saved him countless times now, several, at least three or four. What, what is there to think here? Balor has to be confused because Cole just did this. Is this a heel turn for Cole? But a face, but a face. Uh, they may they remain face O'Reilly and Strong. What does Fish do when he comes back? Who does he side with? There are a lot of questions up in the air, and I'm very very excited for NXT on Wednesday because hopefully we'll get to answer some of these questions. Cole, probably the best promo guy in the Undisputed Era. He should be cutting a promo on Wednesday. If he doesn't, I'll be very confused and a little disappointed because we have we need answers. We need to hear why he did this. Is he jealous of O'Reilly and Balor's forming relationship? Does he want the title back? What does this mean? And I don't know. I don't have any answers for you yet, but when I find out, you're going to hear about it. Uh, But this has been the NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day review. I've been Matthew Perry for Perry's Pit and GMs for Hire. I'll see you guys next time.